Hey, let's talk about the massive surplus that our country had as a result of the Howard government. Now, you can think what you like about whether that was a good thing or bad thing about how we managed to get that surplus, but the fact is that we had a massive surplus in this country, and now it is all gone. We don't have that massive surplus. Nothing has changed in the system that caused the global financial crisis. There has been no systemic change to repair the problem. As some of you York said, a patch has been put on the tire of the global economic system and it's been sent off to roll again and there's no brakes on it. Nothing has changed. We don't have a massive surplus to protect us anymore from the next time it crashes. And sure, we've had the mining boom and we're sitting okay at the moment, but it's not sustainable, it's not going to last. We are at risk like every other country and it just happens to be that right now, for the moment, we are still the lucky country. Let's talk about constant growth economics. This idea that we must be in a state of constant growth. Have to be in growth or we're on the brink of collapse. We have to be manufacturing more stuff and selling more stuff constantly. This is what our society is now based on. We live on a finite planet. Our planet is not getting bigger. Constant growth economics on a planet that isn't getting any bigger is unsustainable. It is doomed, doomed to crash and burn. And that's what we've seen with the global financial crisis and it will happen again because nothing has changed, nothing has been repaired, nothing is fixed. The purpose of the Occupy movement is for the people to come together and come up with ideas and strategies so that we can develop a new way of living on this planet. So when the media says, what are your demands? Excuse me, can we just have some time to talk with each other? We only just met each other, we're still learning each other's names. Changing the planet, I mean, the Westminster system has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. We've had like, you know, 20 or so days. Give us a chance to have some conversations and think of some good ideas, and we'll get back to you. Back to the RBA, let's talk about security. Yeah. If you don't know about security, let's go and do a bit of research on that. There is serious sickness and corruption going on in that building. And we have no idea whether it's being fixed because there haven't been any massive public inquiries. There's just been, let's just sweep it under the rug, not talk about security, not talk about the fact that there were massive bribes going out all over the world to try and convince people to use our polymer money to use our plastic money that we developed. This building was sending people all over the world bribing. It is absolute fact, absolutely true. There is deep corruption going on in this building. Financial terrorism. Would you think that we're not related to Wall Street and we're not connected to that? The NAB and the West Bank Bank both received huge bailouts. We are deeply connected. Our country is deeply connected to what's going on in the world economy. And if you want to know how it affects people at home, think about the housing affordability crisis that's been going on over the last 10 years. It is getting more and more difficult to just live where you want to live, you have to move further away, you have to use more transport, use more fossil fuels to, to get to where you want to go and do what you need to do. It's, it's not good. And that's only in the last 10 years. What happens over generations? Yeah. What is our country going to be if this is the rate of change in the space of generations? Oh. I will finish up because I know I'm going on. Okay, let's talk about some ideas for solutions. Let's talk about a salary cap. Why the fuck can't we have a salary cap in decades? Yeah. There's plenty of uh, there's plenty of ideas out there like triple bottom line and Republican working with me. Instead of corporations, 
Apparently, corporations, I spoke to a QC two days ago, corporations are legally bound, legally bound to serve their shareholders and profit margins above all else. That is sickness. That is sickness. They can be charged, they can be charged and put in prison for considering humans, for considering the environment. That is sickness. Okay, so Triple Twenty One reporting is reporting on profit, reporting on environment, on social effect. So there's there's plenty of solutions out there. Okay, there's also ways that we could do something similar where we legislate so that there is an ecological and social compact that any business from outside of Australia, when they come into Australia, has to sign that they will adhere to these guidelines, or they don't need to do business in our country. So. Let's talk about politicians. Yeah. Politicians and right now have the ability to make promises whether you are left or right, it doesn't matter. They have the ability to make promises of going to Parliament and they completely backflip and not honour their word to the people that they are representing. Up until very recently in Holland, it was absolutely possible to prosecute politicians for behaving in such a manner. This is just an idea, have a chew on it. When I was speaking to Julian Burnside QC the other day, uh, he mentioned the idea of when companies apply for a tender application for a job from the government, if they just put on their form, how much money are you giving to the arts? How much money are you putting into social and environmental projects? And have that as part of the consideration of Okay, we're the government, we're going to spend public money on paying the private corporation. Let's pick the private corporations that are trying to do good in the community. What's wrong with that idea? And last of all, last of all to the 1%, greed is a sickness. And I say compassion for the sick. But quarantine them now.